A discussion on why we shoot 35mm film. Why, in this day and age when Kodak have bumped their prices up and development of film is costing us quite a lot of money, why we still shoot 35mm film? That's a great question. For me, I love shooting digital. I love shooting Nikon, specifically digital, um, if only because I have all the glass from my 35mm days. So let's look at that then. Let's look at why I shoot Nikon. This is my Nikon F5. I would love a Nikon F6. They're upwards of $2,000. It's ridiculous. This I picked up for 100 bucks. $100, and it is fantastic. An absolute beast. The dials and the buttons and the menus, etc. it just feels like my digital cameras, but it's not. It's a 35 millimeter fully automatic uh, beast. So I love shooting the F5. It's my old faithful. Having been said, I do still really, really, really enjoy shooting my Canon A1. Now this has been in the family for years. This was actually uh, given straight loan to me uh, by one of my family members and I've put so many rolls of film through this A1 and it is not let me down once. Now the Canon A1 is super popular. The problem with this for me is that it's overpriced. At the moment you can find them for around $50 but they're not going to be good copies or if you're lucky they might be. You're looking at upwards of $120 for this camera. And you can get cameras which do very, very well for a lot less. This is the Minolta XG7. Yes, uh, the settings are gonna be different, okay? You get some settings with AE1 that you don't with the Minolta. My point is this with regards to shooting film and why we do it. I get the feeling of complete nostalgia when I start pulling this trigger. I wasn't around in the 70s, 60s when these were created, but they were certainly being shot when I was a kid. My first experience with film was APS. And back then, all we had was APS. Incorrect. We had uh, early digitals and we had film, but APS was all the rage. So I shot an APS camera, not unlike this. This is my um, Leica C11, I believe. C11. This little bad boy is absolutely wonderful. And yeah, it's crazy. Why would I shoot this camera when I have all my others? Uh, because I have a bunch of APS old stock left. And the nostalgia I get with shooting this camera makes me happy every single time. I just send my films off to Darkroom and they develop them for around $15. So my life of film began with APS. No, it wasn't very good, a little bit grainy. I'll show you some pictures from uh, Afghanistan when I was there in 2001. Um, if it hadn't been for an APS camera, I would not have captured those images. I certainly could not afford the digital cameras of the day. I mean, this was 2001. You're looking at uh, Nikon D1 and D1X territory. They w those were $10,000. I was not buying uh, D1. Um, at the time, I bought a Canon Elf, the Elf on a Shelf. And that gave me these pictures, which are wonderful. Have a little scroll through and look. This is from 2001. So these images were taken 2001. You can see they're super grainy, but you know, without that camera, I would have never captured these moments and these interesting times. Super wonderful pictures. And I love every one of them. Now that having been said, these days, I really still like a compact camera. Now, I can't always take digital cameras with me in the places I wanna go. Um, wrong, film cameras in the places I wanna go. So I'll take a digital camera. And this is my go-to for my little digital camera, my Canon G11. The Canon G11 for me is a lot like shooting a film camera in that it's really slow. It's automatic, yeah, when I push the button, I push the shutter release and I'm getting images, but I get them relatively show, even, uh, slow. Even on continuous shooting with this, it's relatively slow. 
Now the pictures I'm about to show are from a soccer game I went to recently. I went to watch Columbus Crew. Now, the G11 isn't the smallest camera in the world, but I still managed to get a couple of great pictures. You know, sporting events are awesome. It's nice to have a zoom lens, but you know, you roll with what you've got and I captured some awesome images. No, the crew didn't win, but still, I managed to capture these images and that at least made me happy. Um, and I took this camera in with me. Now, if you go to a soccer match or if you go to a football match or any other big sporting event, they can be funny about what cameras you take in. I believe it's under six inches for the, uh, for the zoom length or for the lens length. So some security cards can be funny. That's why I always take a smaller but more powerful pocket camera. So the Canon G11 does it for me. The sensor on it's fantastic and the images I get are great. I still get some opt optical zoom with it, um, but it's small, it's robust. I take a couple of batteries with me, a big SD card, and I capture my images. The Canon G11 for me is a great uh, camera for that kind of thing. Now, I would love to take a film camera in with me to the sporting events, but it would have to be my um, it would have to be my F5 or my F4, and they're just too big to be carrying around in these sporting events, especially when it's big and it's rowdy. I don't want to damage those cameras. They certainly have a shelf life. What I'd love to take um, is my medium format Yashica bad boy. Now, this shoots images like no other camera I have, but I very rarely shoot it because it's a pain in the butt to do so. I have a bunch of 120 in the fridge. I have some 120 in there from 1948 that I'm looking forward to shooting. I think I'm gonna shoot that on my Mamiya 330. So look out for those images. Hopefully they come out. Um, I'm near an old uh, airport and there's a boneyard, a plain boneyard there, isn't there, and there's a couple of old aircraft in there I wanna get shots of. And I shall do that with that 1948 when it's really bright. Uh, outside that 1948 um, 120 and we'll see if it works. If it doesn't, I have some from the 70s as well. But I'd love to bring this camera in every, uh, every event I go to. I'd love to take it around everywhere. You know, it's just, um, it's just not convenient, so I don't do it. But when I shoot it, it makes me feel good. People always ask me questions. So I love shooting that camera. That having been said, I am not opposed, uh, opposed to bridge cameras. This tiny little bridge camera, I can't remember which Nikon it is. It's the Nikon Coolpix something or other. These actually go for zero money. The Coolpix itself, I'll take a picture of this. I don't know if you guys can see that, probably not. I'll post the image up. The Coolpix range has a whole bunch of these bridge cameras. And yeah, you're not putting this in your pocket because it's a really weird shape. But if you just get a Peak Design hub, um, thread the anchor through the side and then you can just wear it like um, a shoulder strap over yourself and you get a massive opt optical zoom with this. A lot of them have CCD sensors um, and it still gives you that wonderful feeling of, of uh, considered photography. So why do we still shoot 35? If we have access to these bridge cameras, which cost nothing, these cheaper um, CCD pocket um, digicams, why do we sh still shoot 35? I think for me, it's the nostalgia. Um, when I was in the military, um, I did sharp shooting and I really loved shooting my rifles. I enjoyed the consideration of pulling the trigger, taking my time and those one shots that really counted, rather than just blasting away um, wasting shots, wasting your time, just one shot really considered. And that's kind of like 35 millimeter film photography. You have to set your composition, think about what you're doing, and then pull the trigger. Because if you don't set things up, and if you don't get your focus quite right, the film is unforgiving. If you use uh, expensive film as well, Portra 400, which at the moment I think is selling for two or three million dollars a roll, then you really want to get it right. So for me, shooting 35 millimeter film is about really considering what you're doing, setting those compositions, and getting those grainy, beautiful images out, such as these. Have a little look through. Capturing these moments with 35 millimeter film, for me, the imperfections, the underexposure, the overexposure, the expired film, the grains, 
waiting for the film to be developed, learning the cameras and learning the new styles, the nostalgia attached to them. I love every photo. They all get printed out. They all go in my albums to remember forever. So, why did I get back into shooting 35 millimeter film? Um, I came across some old photographs I had from when I was growing up uh, that my parents took and they took them on 35 mil um, film. That kind of brought back some nostalgia for me and I wanted to recreate those family moments. So I bought my first 35 film, uh, 35 millimeter film camera uh, in a while and it was this. This is the Minolta Maxim 7000, which I purchased accidentally. And when I say accidentally, how do you purchase a camera accidentally? Well, I bought a box of camera equipment off of Facebook Marketplace, a whole box of camera equipment. Some young man near my house uh, was having a clear out of his grandparents' um, house. There was a huge container full of um, used vintage camera equipment and the 7000 was in there with all of the glass that I could ever imagine, flashes, battery packs, etc. In there also was a Pentax Spotmatic, in there also was a Yashica EL, was a 8mm movie Yashica camera, Super 8, which I'll be shooting that as well. Bunch of glass, bunch of old retro um, tripods, but all in all, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful stuff. So I love this camera. It has a nifty 50 and I have some beautiful images with it as well. Have a look at those. So those are just some comments of mine. That's just a little background, places I've been, things I've seen. Um, I was military for many years. I went to Bosnia, Kosovo, Afghanistan a couple of times and I got pictures from all over these kind of places and I'll be posting those and, and you can have a look at some of my reels and, and see the kind of stuff I shot. These, these days I'm just an amateur hobbyist photographer. I shoot street photography. I love collecting cameras. I'm pretty much an avid uh, collector of all brands, makes, names, whatever deals are going, I'll buy them. I'll shoot film through them. I buy old film stock. Um, and I run them through my 35 millimeter vintage cameras and I don't care what they come out like. I really don't care. For me, all of the images that I make in my family, they all go in my albums and every, every single one of them makes me smile. So thanks for logging into the channel. That's a little bit about me, a bit about my background, a bit about why I shoot. It's mainly nostalgia. Leave some comments, let me know why you shoot 35 millimeter film. If you shoot digital, great, so do I. I'll be posting some of my street photography as well. Um, nice to get to know you guys. I'm sure we'll be seeing each other a lot more in the future as I post more reviews. Thanks. Bye.